One of the things we want everybody to understand is that you can hit just as many winning shots and great shots hitting with touch as you can hitting hard. But many times people think every ball they hit has to be hit as hard as possible. So drill number one is good because it gets you to get a feel for having soft hands and getting your racket face at the right angle. So what happens is every time I hit the ball to Matt, he has to tap it to himself before he hits it back to me. And I do the same. It's also a good drill for getting in position. When people first start doing it, there's a lot of this stuff going on, but you really need to be in great position to do it. So it looks something like this. Notice the first thing we do is move and get our nose to the ball. When you first try this, it seems impossible. You just have to keep doing it. And you try to keep the ball as close to your racket. Look, I try to keep it as close to my racket as possible because there's a component in touch that's how much momentum do I have and how soft do my hands have to be. The second one is what we call the move fast, hit slow drill. So we're going to be moving as quickly as we can, yet hitting the ball as softly as possible. A lot of players can only move fast and hit fast. And there's going to be situations where we're all in midcourt and all closing in where I'm going to need to get to the ball as quickly as possible, yet give him nothing to work with. All right, so it looks like this. No worries. And the variation on this is you can start cross court from each other. You can work your way in and back. So we start back at the very far service line. Move fast, hit slow. Fast, hit slow. Fast, hit slow. Let's work our way back. Soft and relaxed hands, soft and relaxed grip. Now, one that we like to do with students that you guys can do, Matt's going to start inside the service line. He's going to make a split step. I'm going to feed him a ball. He's going to come to the ball and hit a touch angle volley. Ready? Go. So if I were his opponent and I was coming in behind a return, he's coming in behind his serve. He's going to pounce on that ball and hit a nice little touch ball right by me, which I will never get. And we could do it with half volleys. So you can look like this. And, and we do that a lot with our students because after a while they start to relax in midcourt and realize no matter how dire the circumstances look, that person's in, I'm closing in, you get on that ball, done. You're utilizing areas of the court you couldn't utilize if you hit the ball a million miles an hour. Would you like to add anything? Doubles is like almost... <laughs> We treat it so differently than we do other team sports. So I like to think about the positioning of our opponents like a coach in football would or a coach in basketball would. If my partner's up here and I'm back here, this is going to sound really oversimplified, where are the people standing? Up there and back here. Where is there nobody standing? There and there. So how do we play opponents that we go, man, they just got everything today? And yet the Bryan brothers can't cover everything or the best players in the world can't cover everything. What do they know that we don't? Their opponents access more parts of the court that two people can't cover. And what's interesting for me is, especially at our level, because I include myself and my father in this level, we're much closer in level to you guys than we are to the pros. Hitting to that part of the court or hitting lobs in that part of the court is accessible only if you hit the ball or can hit the ball softly. You cannot hit hard balls into that part of the court. And anybody who's a good lobber will tell you, yeah, it doesn't take a lot of pace to make that. And the fun thing I love about thinking like this is everyone who's at this Congress, everybody who I've met last year or this year, has the skills to do this. We just have to, if anything, dial it back a bit. I had some people today who were awesome, but that every ball was redlining as hard as we could, which meant we were hitting everything hard, which meant in order for it to go in, we had to hit to the furthest part of the court. 
So that's what we start, what we call playing hallway tennis, where we're only hitting balls that go as wide as the sidelines. What we want to be doing is playing hourglass tennis. We're hitting balls that spread the court so that two people can't possibly cover all the options. All of a sudden it makes you look like a genius, even though you don't hit very hard. Do these drills. I'm telling you, do these drills and practice playing points like that. It opens up a whole new world for you as an adult competitive player.